Hey guys, how is everyone doing over there? Today I'll try to make a really nice TV screen shader which I have been trying to perfect since like a lot of time and today I think I might have found the solution to it. Uh, earlier I have already attempted at making this but uh, uh, it wasn't completely procedural but today I'll try to make it out of only out of math nodes. So let's see how that goes. Another thing uh, we are on 312 subscribers right now and I'm trying really hard to get us to 500 subscribers. So any at any point of this video, if you like the content that I make, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right away. And also don't forget to hit that like button because it really helps. It tells the YouTube algorithm that I make good content. So that's up to you to decide. But yeah, I prefer you to do that. So let's start off with this plane. So yeah, I've imported a plane. Uh, I've made a new material. Let's add in first a UV map node, which I'll use for this entire project. Why UV map? Because it's much more versatile. Uh, even if you don't want to mess around with uh, the node network, you can do it very easily in the UV editor. So yeah, that's my reason. You can use object coordinates, but the process will not be the entirely the same, just to mention. So yeah, I will be using UV coordinates. Next, I want to separate its X, Y and Z components. So let's quickly do that X, Y, Z. And I want to separate them. So separate X, Y, Z. I'll use the X coordinate for this. You can use the Y, but you need to switch around uh, this entire process for that. But yeah, next I'll add in a math node. Uh, very simple stuff. And what I'll do is I'll first of all make a socket here. Okay, so once you have this thing, I've made a socket over here and what I'll do, I'll set this to compare. So what it's basically doing is it's taking two values, this one X value and then a value of our choice, which will we, which we will decide in just a bit. Uh, we'll choose the epsilon, which will basically be the threshold. So it's basically the distance away from the two points and it will assign it the white value if it it's present and black if it's not. So uh, there's a lot of documentation regarding this. I hope you check this out. I'm in no way a really skilled guy. It's just I have good, this good idea. So let's just share it. Next, I will duplicate this compare node four times with the socket already inside. The shortcut that I use is Control Shift D. Remember that very helpful. Uh, next. Uh, another important note that this epsilon value in all these nodes is really important. So let me just make a value node. And what I'll do is I will make this a node socket over here. And then I will feed this into all the epsilon values. Okay, looks pretty nice. Uh, okay, looks like nothing by the way. <laughs> okay, so first let's start off with this first compare node. What we need to do basically is first we need to start off by making one pixel and for that uh, if you know what I'm talking about in some sort of like uh, pixel arrangement like this okay this one looks pretty good uh, if you can see there are like if we take one of these pixels you'll see there are like one two three and four lines in total in the vertical direction and two at the top in the horizontal direction so we'll try to recreate that uh, in Blender and I'll show you how to stack them and array them basically. So yeah, first let's set this one value to zero. So it's basically at this side. Then I'll set this to the, uh, the, I'll set it like one third of the way of the plane. So just, I'll set this to one by three. So it's basically located at one third of the way there. So let me just bring down this epsilon value. Yep, you can see it's one third of the way there. Then this one will be two thirds of the way. So I'll set it by two by three and the last one will be one. Okay, so as you can see, this one will be half because when it will stack, it will look seamless. So no need to worry about that right now. Uh, one thing I need to do is I need to change this in such a way that uh, this value is not too sensitive. So I'll just uh, add in another math node. I will divide this by 100 so that it only accepts decimal values and you can see there's like much more control. 
Okay, so as you can see, we have all these separate bars. Now what we need to do is we need to merge them. So what we'll do is we'll add these, not the white noise. We will add a math node and we'll merge all of these. So just duplicate this, uh, add both of these. And at the end, just add both of these again like this so as you can see we have already formed the vertical lines uh looks pretty nice for now i can adjust it with this so yeah looks pretty nice so now what i'll do is i will duplicate this node this node this node and this node over here along with this uh one socket here and i'll just control shift d8 so we don't need to do all the work again we have already we just need to plug this one value in and we need to set this to one so that we have the values next i will feed this node into here instead of this because as you can see we have formed the horizontal lines and we will add them with the vertical so it will give this really nice arrangement what you might have noticed by now is that there is this overlapping thing and that's because wherever there is overlap there are like values higher than one which should not be the case so I'll just use clamp on all these math nodes. So you can see it's fixed. Yeah, very simple stuff really. Uh, there is this extra output node. I'll just delete that and boom, there you go. This is the pixel uh, framework sort of thing. Now let's start off by making uh, the uh, red, green and blue gradient or color bars. You can call it that. I'll use the X because it's spreading along the X axis. I'll feed it into a color ramp. And here, what we need to do is we need to use a, instead of linear, we need to use constant. So that's one thing that you need to make sure. Next, I'll add two more node uh, outputs. No, wait, not two. Yeah, I'll only need three of them. So the first one, let it be at zero. Second one, I'll set this to, uh, point no uh, one by three because it's one third of the way there if you think about it next i'll set this to two by three and this time we don't need to set one because it's just all the way there next let's start off by assigning the colors so first we need to set the hue at zero saturation at full value at full so we get red then we need uh, the green value for that i'll just plug in one by three over here saturation full value full so yeah it's practiced and at last blue so i'll set two by three for that i'll set saturation to full and boom you got the three primary colors lastly what i'll do is i want to change these uh, black bars into white and wherever there is white i want black so i basically want to invert this entire image and for that you just have a very conveniently placed node called the invert node boom simple as that Lastly, what I'll do is I will control shift right click and drag this like line over here to both these nodes. So it mixes. This is a really nice shortcut. If you have a uh, node wrangler on, I'll not show you. You should know. Okay. Uh, and you need to set this to multiply. So basically what's happening is that wherever there is white, uh, we, we know that whenever we multiply a number by white, it becomes the number itself and if you multiply it by zero it becomes zero hence the black color and thus this thing works okay lot of talking <laughs> lastly what i'll do is uh next what i'll do is uh, i will help stack this so let's see what happens when i try to scale this so what i'll do is i'll add a vector math node over here and i'll set this to scale so that everything scales uniformly and just see what happens when I try to scale this. Okay, everything just messes up. And the reason is that uh, we have just made this uh, one uh, pixel just using like this thing, it's not repeated. So for the UV coordinates, it has values higher than two, uh, higher than one. So it does not tend to repeat this whole thing on that. So the only thing we want it to do is to repeat itself. 
And for that, there is this very nice node. I'll duplicate this. I'll feed this in here and I'll feed this one over here. And you'll see there's this very nice uh, feature called fraction. And what it will basically do is once I'll improve this, uh, earlier when we had this, uh, it started off with zero, then it went to one, then it went to two, and then it went to three, and then so on till infinity. But when we add a fraction node, what it does is that it starts off with uh, zero and it goes to one, then again, it goes to zero and then it goes to one, then zero, one, zero, one. So you basically have this really nice grid, which is basically duplicated all the way through. So it's like a really nice feature that Blender has. And yeah, I've utilized that over here. And once you place this fraction node and the scale node, everything just works perfectly. Just look at this. Wow. You can just do whatever number you want. Eventually it will become white, but yeah. I'll set this for 10 right now. And there are two very important values in this whole node network. The one is this scale value. And then the second one is this value over here. So what I'll do is I will duplicate this. I'll set this to 10 and I'll assign this over here. Okay, too much of talking. Uh, I want to set this black grid to a bit more of a thicker, uh, a bit more thickness. So let's just do that. That seems fine, just for demonstration purposes. Now let's start by adding the image over here. So for that, I will just use this. Uh, I'll just import this one photo that I have. So yeah, I've dragged and dropped this one image over here. Uh, pretty nice scenery. So now what we want to do is we want to start by pixelating this image. So it's pretty easy. What we need to do is we need to use the same uh, UV coordinates, the same coordinates don't need, you don't want to do like this duplicate thing. It might change and it will be pretty irritating afterwards. So I'll just place this over here. And what I'll do is I will use the vector math node and uh, I will set this to snap. So what snap does is that it's like it reduces the resolution of the grid basically. So if I put this over here, I'll set this to 10. No, sorry. I'll set this to 0.1 and you see it just reduces the resolution. I will add in a, I'll use this same value node from back here so that everything matches perfectly. All the pixels are actually the size of this same grid. And what I'll do is I will invert this image basically. So let's just uh, add in a math node. I'll invert this value. So uh, I will choose divide. I will put this over here and I will place one over here. So it's basically inverted. Then I'll use this into increment. And I know this is like a value node and this is a vector, but what it will do is it will uh, assign the same value to the all the x, y, and z coordinates. So now you'll notice that once you plug this vector into here, it just becomes pixelated. But once I just multiply this again, the same shortcut control shift drag with your right uh, mouse, and then match both of these. Once I'll multiply both of these, you'll see that all the red, green and blue values are pretty much assigned at this point, just like how a TV does it. Uh, once I start adjusting this, you can see the resolution start increasing and boom, you have a really nice TV screen shader. So yeah, we're pretty much the way there. All the only thing that we need to do now is we need to take this uh, output and feed this into an emission for now. And what you'll notice is that once I Im increase the scale, the image brightens up. So yeah, the, you can get some pretty nice close up shots from here. Uh, let's see. It's like a really useful shader and it's completely procedural. So yeah, you don't need any sort of image other than this image over here to make this effect. Uh, any intermediate, if you are just like started off with Blender, you know the basics, but you want to get into the advanced stuff. This is a really nice way to get into it. So yeah, guys, this was the TV screen shader. 
Uh, I hope that you like this video. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to show that by just hitting that like button down there. Again, I want to get this channel to 500 subscribers. So just do that real quick for me. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.